CNBC TV 18 Weekender. I'm just going to throw some questions at you. Uh, let's see on how do you respond to that. First food that you cooked? French. First country that you visited? France. <laughs> Would you rather be an entrepreneur, caterer or a restaurateur? I think I'd be a restaurateur. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, when was the last time you cooked for your wife? I make eggs for them every morning. Yeah. Every <laughs> morning? <laughs> <laughs> Nearly. No, no, no. I cook for them once in a while. Well, when was the last time you really tried something which didn't work? Not for a long time, honestly. There because you know what? Uh, whenever I cook, I first plan everything in my head. Who would you want to cook for? I think I'd like to cook for the king of Japan. Because that is one culture or cuisine mm. that you like that the I most. Loved. Yeah. Mm. If you had to pick one of your restaurants as your favorite, what one would that be? I think Amadeus currently is my favorite restaurant. Not because of the food or... But because of the space and because of the setting, hmm. it's at the end of the day at the, you know, at the end uh, at the National Center for Performing Arts. It's a beautiful building. It's culturally rich. It has an open space. Okay, and I'm redoing it. <laughs> <laughs> so something to look forward to then. Of course, totally, totally. My mind is buzzing every single minute on what I'm doing. <laughs> and what there. you can do with that. <laughs> and what I'm doing there. <laughs> Over ordering or comfort? Not, not over ordering <laughs> at all. I, I tell all my staff, I tell my people that India is a place where we can't just afford to waste food. Even for catering, it's the same thing. Even for restaurants, it's the same thing. It's not a question of money. It's a question of ethics, okay? To make sure that you just don't put any amount of table on the food. Vegetarian or non-vegetarian? Both, seriously. Being, you know, again, I have a great passion for vegetarian food also. I feel that vegetarian cooking creates, you know, you, you need much more expertise for it, okay? It has different layers, it has different textures, it has different flavors, okay? It's so different from non-veg. To me, to cook a good piece of meat, okay, is much simpler, okay, than cooking a good vegetarian food, seriously. Do you think India has been able to crack between health, nutrition and good flavored food? I think we are getting there slowly, slowly, but we are crawling there. I wish and I wish and I wish and I pray, okay, that we, our our people, okay, would take more interest, okay, more effort in what they grow, okay, whether it's meat, whether it's vegetables, how they grow it, okay, what is what they use to grow it, okay. The time is really, we've been talking about this for the last 20 years, but the time has come, seriously. You know, it's happening all over the world. It's so, you know, you feel so unhappy sometimes when you say travel to parts of, say California or uh, Spain or Europe, okay, the type of ingredients that you get, okay, as a chef I can make out, okay, what will a raw spinach taste here and what will taste there. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the country, mm -hmm. it's not about the water, mm -hmm. it's just how they treat, okay, their produce and we can do it, I'm sure. I know it'll take money, it'll take effort, but the government should make an effort for it. You know, Chinese uh, food is something that came into India much sooner than the other cuisines could actually make make it make the mm -hmm. inroads in when it comes to it comes to authentic flavors. Mm -hmm. So whether it's Japanese or Spanish food or Mexican sure. continental, etc. What do you think India is responding more and faster to? I think now people are looking at more at uh, my my God, tough question to answer. Chinese food's always been there, will always be there, but. And then uh, there's an Indian version of all these foods also. And of course also. an Indian version of all this. Okay, but I feel that uh, Asian food will always do well. Okay, one, because the the connection of the palate of Indians and Asians are there. I think we are born with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Secondly, European food might not do always do well here because of the lack of produce. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, European food depends heavily on the produce. Okay. So it cannot be masked, unfortunately. Yeah. So I think uh, Asian food will always do well. Mm. Farak, you know, I've always wanted to ask this question to uh, somebody who runs a restaurant. You, we look at food prices move so volatile, mm. whether it's some fresh produce or whether mm. it's pulses, which were at record highs last year and mm. at uh, so lows this year. How as a restaurant do you manage uh, with such volatile food prices? I think luckily now between so many restaurants and our catering, we have a, you know, volume business so mm. we have fixed suppliers for a lot of things okay they do they are not volatile but they do move up up, up and down mm. but we try and keep them in check that's the only thing we can really do mm. but we 
uh, we don't really go every day into the market and order food so sure. it comes to us mm. fortunately mm. Uh, as I, that's one of the things which i also pride in i think one of the good things that you do is to maintain your suppliers so a lot of my suppliers have been supplying me for the last 15 years 16 years 18 years mm. it's a fact and i think that helps a lot you know when i was chatting with you earlier as well you have a lot of hope when you uh, as you talk so if there is one thing that you had to ask government for this sector what would that be i think relax licensing mm. okay mm. relax timings mm. okay encourage good food control you know they've come up with fs sai yes. for example yes. but how effective is it mm. really are we getting the produce that we want is it pollution free is the water clean that's all i can ask for farooq what would what is that next thing that you want to do from here on i mean as you said you are perhaps in the best creative phase of your life mm. as you see it mm. right now what is that one more thing that you want to do apart from already that you're doing i think i'll just create that's what i'll do i think uh, i feel uh, you know one more thing i've realized now for the last 20 years i've created on my own but now i feel that i want to encourage young people to also create okay so i have an r and d team now we think together it's much more pleasurable hmm. than just one person thinking hmm. okay so i want to encourage i really want my restaurants in the future to be again very food based hmm. okay i think that's how i started okay i don't say i've lost the plot in between okay but i want to continue that hmm. that's what i want to do hmm. and i want that uh, I, i feel that that's slowly 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 missing in bombay unfortunately and that's what i want to do it takes a lot of effort you know i've got to stand long hours but you got to work for it but you got to do it seriously so you know as you uh, clearly proven that you are a self made man you funded all of your ventures sure. ahead uh, have you invested as well uh, have you ever seen other venues or everything that you've earned has gone into another it restaurant has. that's the dangerous part of this business hmm. okay a lot of the business basically is funded by ourselves hmm. we don't uh, you know I I just don't believe in partnerships and mm. disagreements mm. and stuff like that. I've never believed in it. But is the power of money also invested in something else? Is it like yeah, maybe of course, banks, so land, of course, gold, yeah, yeah, of course, not gold, shares. but it's more no, no not even shares. No, I don't bother <laughs> no. about all that. Cars. <laughs> Farooq, thank you so much for an amazing chat with you today, and we wish you all the best for your future Thanks endeavors. Lord. Lovely, lovely. Thank you so much. Lovely chatting with you. CNBC TV 18 Weekender. 